Hello. In this video, we will discuss one of the most fundamental concepts in calculus, the derivative. Roughly speaking, the derivative measures the rate of change of a given function, namely, how fast or how slow the values of the function change. Geometrically, the derivative is the slope of a tangent line to the graph of the function. So let's start by recalling what is the slope of a straight line in the plane. Recall that the equation of a non-vertical line in the plane has the form y equals mx plus n. The number m is called the slope of the line. The slope is positive when the line is increasing, undefined when the line is vertical, negative when the line is decreasing, and zero when the line is horizontal. If two points on the line are known, then the slope can be computed as follows. If p equals x1, y1, and q equals x2, y2 are two points in the plane with x1 not equal to x2, then the slope of the line passing through p and q is y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Now let's proceed with the definition of the derivative. Given a function f and the number a in its domain, the derivative will be defined as the slope of the tangent line to the graph at the point that corresponds to the number a. More precisely, the derivative of a function f at the number a is defined as the limit as x approaching a of f of x minus f of a divided by x minus a if this limit exists and is finite. Here's the idea behind this definition. The quotient f of x minus f of a over x minus a represents the slope of a secant line passing through two points on the graph of f. As x approaches a, one of the points will move towards the other and the secant line will approach a tangent line. In the limit of the process, we will obtain the slope of the tangent line at a. Now let's proceed to our first example. If f of x equals 3 minus 2x squared, use the definition of the derivative to find f prime of 1. Here's the graph of the function f, and here's the point that corresponds to x equals 1. Finding the derivative at 1 means finding the slope of the tangent line at that point. To compute the derivative, we use the definition. f prime of 1 equals the limit as x goes to 1, f of x minus f of 1 divided by x minus 1. We replace f of x by 3 minus 2x squared and substitute x equals 1 to compute f of 1. We get limit as x goes to 1, 3 minus 2x squared minus 3 minus 2 times 1 squared divided by x minus 1. We simplify now the numerator and we get limit as x goes to 1, negative 2x squared plus 2 divided by x minus 1. We now factor the numerator to get limit as x goes to 1 of negative 2 times x minus 1, times x plus 1, divided by x minus 1. We can now cancel the term x minus 1, and get limit as x goes to 1, of negative 2, times x plus 1. This limit is very easy to compute. We can replace x by 1, and get negative 2 times 1 plus 1, which equals negative 4. Our conclusion is therefore f prime of 1 equals negative 4. When I present the definition of the derivative as a limit in class and show how to use it, students will often approach me and claim that they have a much faster and easier way for computing derivatives. They will use differentiation rules 
such as the product rule and the power rule, instead of computing a limit. Those students ask, why do we need the definition when easier methods are available? Well, my answer to this question has two parts. First, the differentiation rules are based on the definition of the derivative as a limit. One must use the definition in order to derive the known rules and to create new ones. The differentiation rules work because of the way derivatives are defined. Secondly, you may need at some point to differentiate a function for which the differentiation rules will not apply. In that case, you will need to resort to the original definition of the derivative as a limit in order to proceed. Now let's continue with two remarks and the second example. The definition of the derivative can be written equivalently as follows. f prime a equals the limit as h goes to 0 of f of a plus h minus f of a over h. In this case, the x-coordinate of the moving point is a plus h, which means that h is the difference between the two x-coordinates of the two points. As h goes to 0, one of the points will move towards the other, and again the secant lines will approach a tangent line. My second remark is that a function may not have a derivative at a certain point. This can happen if our graph has a corner. At a corner, there is no tangent line, and therefore there is no derivative. Another possibility is that our graph will have a tangent line at A, but that tangent will be a vertical line. Since vertical lines have no slope, our function will not have a derivative at that point. Let's continue with the second example. If g of x equals 1 over x, use the definition of the derivative to find g prime of a, where a is an arbitrary non-zero number. We use the equivalent form for the definition of the derivative and write g prime of a equals to the limit as h goes to 0 of g of a plus h minus g of a over h. Since the function g is 1 over x, we can replace g of a plus h by 1 over a plus h and g of a by 1 over a. We can combine the two terms in the numerator using a common denominator and get limit as h goes to 0 of 1 over h times a minus a plus h divided by a times a plus h. After simplifying the numerator, and cancelling h, we obtain limit as h goes to 0 of negative 1 divided by a times a plus h. Finding the limit of this expression as h goes to 0 is easy. We get negative 1 divided by a times a plus 0, which is equal to negative 1 over a squared. Our conclusion is that g prime of a is equal to negative 1 over a square, or equivalently, 1 over x prime is equal to negative 1 over x square. In the previous example, we found a formula for computing the derivative of a function, or slopes of tangents, at any point in its domain. We can use this formula now to find derivatives of the function 1 over x at any point without going through the long process of computing the limit. We will end this video by presenting a few practice problems for you to work on. Thank you for watching and good luck.